We're now going to introduce the osculating plane and the normal plane. We'll start with the osculating plane. Let's say we have a vector function that traces out some space curve and that this curve is being traced out in this direction. Let's pick an arbitrary point out here on the space curve and look at the unit tangent vector. The unit tangent vector is a vector that's pointing in the direction of motion, in the direction of the tangent line at that point, and it has a magnitude of 1. Now let's look at the unit normal vector, which is perpendicular to unit tangent, also has a magnitude of 1, and points into the curve, or into the turn. The binormal vector is perpendicular to both t and n, and is determined by taking the cross product t cross n. The right hand rule says that we put our fingers along that first vector, our knuckles at the shared initial point, and then curl our fingers back down to the second vector, which would put our thumb pointing up and out of the screen. So I'll do my best to draw this binormal vector that's kind of coming up and out of the screen here. And this binormal vector should be perpendicular to the normal vector and also perpendicular to the unit tangent vector. The osculating plane is the plane that is determined by t and n, meaning that it contains both t and n. So I'll attempt to draw that plane here containing t and n, and what we'll notice here is that the binormal vector that's coming up and out of the screen here is going to be the vector that is perpendicular to that plane. So this binormal vector is the one that we would use in order to determine the plane equation. Let's recall for a moment how exactly we determine a plane equation. In order to write the equation of a plane, we need two things. One is that we need any point. Any point in the plane will do, and we'll call that x naught, y naught, z naught. The other thing that we need is a vector perpendicular to the plane. Now, in the past, we've called this the normal vector. We are using the normal vector in this video to represent a different quantity, so let's just overemphasize this, that this normal vector that we're using to determine the plane is a vector that's perpendicular to the plane. So when we're trying to calculate the osculating plane, we're actually going to be using the binormal vector as a vector that's perpendicular to the plane. So when we have a point in the plane and some vector that's perpendicular to the plane, the plane equation is going to be a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught is equal to zero. So these are the elements that we'll need to find in order to write the equation of the plane that we're going to call the osculating plane. Let's also introduce the normal plane. Again, let's look at this space curve, this helix. Let's grab up this arbitrary point. The unit tangent vector is going to be pointing in the direction of motion. The unit normal vector is going to be pointing into the turn. And we said that the binormal vector is coming out of the screen. The normal plane is the one that contains the unit normal vector and the binormal vector. And in order to determine this plane, a vector that is going to be perpendicular to that plane would be unit tangent. So we've got a plane that contains the normal vector and the binormal vector, and this unit tangent vector kind of going back behind here. So I'll draw that as a dotted line indicating that it's kind of behind this plane, is going to be the vector that we choose that is perpendicular to the plane that will allow us to get that plane equation. So let's look at an example, and I have intentionally chosen a relatively easy vector function that has nice derivatives and magnitudes in order to be able to demonstrate the process. It's a relatively long process, so uh, the easier the vector function, the better for our initial examples. In order to find the osculating plane, remember the osculating plane uses the binormal vector as the perpendicular to the plane vector. And in order to determine this binormal vector, we use the cross product of t cross n. So we need all three of these vectors, t, n, and b. Let's start off with vector t. Remember, vector t is the first derivative of the position vector divided by its magnitude. So r prime, and let's go ahead and say r prime at t is going to be derivative of cosine is minus sine. Derivative of sine is cosine, and derivative of t is just 1. The magnitude of r prime t is going to be negative sine quantity squared is 
positive sine squared t, positive cosine quantity squared is cos squared t, and 1 squared is 1. So this magnitude turns out to be rad 2. So now our unit tangent vector that depends on the parameter is going to be equal to the first derivative divided by its magnitude. So that gives us negative sine t over rad 2, cos t over rad 2, and 1 over rad 2. Now we are going to eventually plug in the value of the parameter, but we can't do that yet because we need to determine the unit normal vector. And in order to determine the unit normal vector, that's going to be the derivative of unit tangent divided by unit tangent derivative's magnitude. And we need that unit tangent function to be a function of the parameter and not be a constant because if we were to go ahead and plug in pi over 2, we would be getting a constant vector here and the derivative of a constant would be 0 and that would be meaningless to us. So we are eventually going to plug in pi over 2, but not yet because we still need to differentiate that vector function. t prime still as a function of t is going to be Negative sine t over rad 2, this derivative is going to be negative cos t over rad 2. Cos t over rad 2's derivative is going to be negative sine t over rad 2. 1 over rad 2's derivative, is a, this is a constant, so its derivative is 0. Now we need to find the magnitude of that derivative function, which remember is not always equal to 1. A unit tangent vector's magnitude is 1, but its derivative may or may not be 1. So in this case, it's not going to be 1. So the magnitude of this derivative vector function is negative cos t over rad 2 quantity squared is going to give us positive cos squared t over 2. Negative sine t over rad 2 quantity squared is going to yield positive sine squared t over 2. And then 0 squared, of course, is just 0. So this magnitude turns out to be 1 over 2, which is 1 over rad 2. Now I'm intentionally choosing not to rationalize that because let's see how it plays out in trying to find this unit normal vector. It might not be necessary. So unit normal is going to be unit tangent's derivative, which is the vector function negative cos t over rad 2, negative sine t over rad 2, and 0. And then that's going to be divided by its own magnitude, so we divide all of that by 1 over rad 2. So when we divide by the fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction, so that's going to be rad 2 times this vector. And we see now that these rad 2's just cancel out when I distribute that rad 2 into the vector. Unit normal is just negative cos t, negative sine t, and 0. Let's also pop unit tangent down here so that we can see both of them together. Unit tangent was negative sine t over rad 2, cos t over rad 2, and 1 over rad 2. Now remember, we're after the binormal vector, which is obtained by taking the cross product of these two vectors. We can cross product the two vectors as functions of t and then plug in the value of the parameter that is pi over 2, but this is actually a good time for me to evaluate both of these at the parameter pi over 2. I'm no longer having to evaluate derivatives. Now I'm just looking for a cross product so we're going to plug pi over 2 into unit tangent and into unit normal. And to do this, I always pop a quick unit circle up here. Pi over 2 is up here where the cosine is 0 and the sine is 1. So unit tangent evaluated at pi over 2 is going to be sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this is negative 1 over rad 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so this is just 0, and then we have the constant 1 over rad 2 as the third component. The unit normal vector evaluated at pi over 2 is cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this is going to be negative 1, and then we have 0 here as the third component. So this will make evaluating the binormal vector a little bit more concise. It's going to be t cross n, so we'll have negative 1 over rad 2, 0, 1 over rad 2, cross 0, negative 1, 0. And that cross product can be calculated by a theoretical determinant. So we're going to look at ijk, 
T cross N, negative 1 over rad 2, 0, 1 over rad 2, 0, negative 1, 0. So the I vector is going to be multiplied by 0 times 0, which is 0, minus negative 1 times 1 over rad 2, that's going to be plus 1 over rad 2. This next bit gets a subtract J times negative 1 over rad 2 times 0 is 0, minus 0 times 1 over rad 2, also 0. And then vector k is going to be multiplied by negative 1 over rad 2 times negative 1, which is positive 1 over rad 2, minus 0 times 0 is 0. So the binormal vector evaluated at pi over 2 is 1 over rad 2 in the direction of i, plus 0 in the direction of j, plus 1 over rad 2 in the direction of k, and in pointy bracket notation, that's 1 over rad 2, 0, 1 over rad 2. So in order to get the equation of the oscillating plane, we need those two things, number one, a point, number two, a vector perpendicular to the plane, and the vector that we're going to use that's perpendicular to the plane is this binormal vector, which is 1 over rad 2, 0, 1 over rad 2, but remember, this is actually just giving me the direction of, of any vector that's perpendicular to the plane, and we can get that same direction if we were to choose to use a scalar multiple of this. So we could use 1, 0, 1, multiplying everything by rad 2, in order to make the numbers a little bit nicer, because this vector is still perpendicular to the plane. It's in the direction of that binormal vector. Now in order to get the point, we're going to take that parameter and plug it back into the original vector function. The original vector function was cos t sine t t, so r evaluated at pi over 2, cosine pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1, and pi over 2 plugged into t is just pi over 2. So we'll use this as our ordered triple, and I'm going to change this to looking like a point instead of a vector, because it is the terminal point of that vector. And now our osculating plane Oops, I had that spelled wrong. Now our osculating plane is going to be the first component of the normal vector times x minus x naught. So that's 1 times x minus 0. Then the second component, I should say the perpendicular vector, times y minus y naught. So that's 0 times y minus 1. And the third component of the perpendicular vector times z minus z naught. So that's 1 times z minus pi over 2, and all of that is equal to 0. So let's clean this up. We get x plus z minus pi over 2 is equal to 0, and this is the equation of our osculating plane. Now remember, to get the normal plane, we're going to use unit tangent vector as the vector that's perpendicular to the plane. We're also going to need a point and a perpendicular vector for that plane equation. The point can be the same one that we had a moment ago, which is 0, 1, and pi over 2. The perpendicular vector is unit tangent evaluated at pi over 2, which turned out to be, we had that up here. But again, we can use any vector that's perpendicular to the plane, and so a scalar multiple of t is totally fine, and we could multiply everything by rad 2 to get negative 1, 0, 1, which makes our calculations a little bit easier. And so the normal plane is going to be the x component of the perpendicular vector times x minus x naught, which is the x coordinate of the ordered triple, so that'll be negative 1 times x minus 0, plus the y component of the perpendicular vector times y minus y naught, so that'll be 0 times y minus 1, plus the z component of the perpendicular vector times z minus z naught, so that'll be 1 times z minus pi over 2. This is all equal to 0, and now we clean it up, and we have negative x, this is all 0, plus z minus pi over 2, and that is the equation of our normal plane. So let's jump into GeoGebra and check our answers. So here we are in a 3D graphing software, and I've input the original position vector function, which traces out this helix. We've also got our parameter value, pi over 2, plugged into that vector function to give us our position point. The first equation that we came up with 
for the osculating plane has been entered here so I'll turn that on and we can see that this plane does appear to have that binormal vector as a vector that would be perpendicular to this plane, right? The unit tangent vector and the unit normal vector are contained within the plane and the binormal vector is coming up and out of this plane here. And we can turn on the normal plane, which was negative x plus z is equal to pi over two. We can see that this normal plane does appear to be containing the normal vector and the binormal vector and it's using the unit tangent vector as the vector that is perpendicular to that plane. So this image confirms our answers.